It's a division matchup. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Detroit Tigers. Ready to go on 2K Sports. Going to the mound, Justin Verlander. When he is on, you're not going to see many hits. We'll see what the day brings. The American League Central rivalry. It's Detroit and Chicago. The Tigers looking to win at home. Glad to have you join us. Tuesday night edition of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Well, Justin Verlander is the manager you sent him out there. He's a guy that is a bulldog. He goes out and he attacks hitters. He's efficient with his stuff, but because he gets so many strikeouts, he can work some deep counts. And he also is a guy that at times can tend to nibble a little bit. You have to remind him, be aggressive, because you got some of the best stuff around. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Scouting Big John, who are we uh, looking at today? Well, you take a look at Alexi Ramirez. He's one of the more exciting players in baseball. Finally got moved to his more natural position, shortstop. And I tell you what, this is a guy that can excite you in a lot of ways. He can hit for power. He can hit for average. And he's not a big guy, but I tell you what, he can generate some power in that frame. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Detroit coming in off a loss in their last one. Just one more game here today. Two games set against Chicago. It's strike one, can't make contact on the fastball. That game, it simply got away from him. Embarrassing almost. It is embarrassing, and, and whether you get beat by little or a lot, it's still only one loss. Move ahead. Verlander with a delivery. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out, one down. Well, I just don't think you can make it any easier than that. Three pitches, up, down, see you later. He's already back at the bench. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. Well, 2009 was another outstanding year for Justin Verlander. And I tell you, I've never seen a guy throw with that velocity, with that movement, like this young man can. This is what's going to make him special for a lot of years. And he steps on first. That's the second out. Certainly for Justin Verlander, always a lot of pressure on him because he's the guy who's got to come out win games after a loss go deep into ball games he's a leader well in the last couple years too with all the injuries to the Tigers pitching staff he's been that one constant and the one that they depend on the most and that's going to do it in this half inning only five pitches to get out of that inning that'll rest you on first chance for the Tigers coming up and doing the pitching it'll be Eric Bedard he's going to start for Chicago Steve, what do you think the strategy is going to be against this Detroit powerhouse? Well, veteran left-hander Eric Bedard out on the mound. He's been hampered by injuries in recent past, but when he's healthy, he's productive. Quality, command of the fastball, outstanding breaking pitch, and a feel for the changeup. As a hitter, you have to be ready for all the different pitches. And in settles in for the first pitch. Ball. Really bad pitch right there. It's a ball. Here's Bedard with a 1 0 pitch. 1 0 pitch, change up in there. 1 and 1. A very effective pitch. The change up painting the outside corner. Now you can go back hard in or go soft away again. Swinging and a miss, and it's now one and two. One two pitch coming. Inch isn't fooled by that pitch. The count is evened up. Here's the delivery. Missed inside with a fastball. The count runs full. Inge digging in. Here's the pitch. Foul. And it goes foul. Full count pitch. Whoa. 
And that's ball four, and that's going to put a runner on to maybe start an offensive inning. That's a bad omen for a pitcher. Lead off, base on ball, sure indication of where his control is. And Carlos Guillen up. Hitting 324 lifetime against the White Sox. Bedard gets set and back up the middle. Bedard, so Guillen is set down. Too late and he is safe at second. Take a look at Jimmy Leland's lineup. This is brought to you by Pepsi. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Well, you talk about a veteran guy right here in Carlos Guillen that when he's healthy, he can be a big time run producer in the middle of the lineup. He hasn't had that help though the last few years, but when he's on, he can really carry a team. Switch hitter, both sides of plate power, very valuable to have on your team. And with two strikes on him now, Cabrera needs to be protective of that zone. I saw the ball well last night, picking up two base hits in that game. That one misses, it gets away from the catcher. So they can't make the play. Well, listen, it's all about advancing base runners in the game. you got to make plays defensively, but that error cost him, and he came out of his hand wrong, and the ball sailed on him. Miguel Cabrera not fooled by that pitch. That'll even the count. And Miguel Cabrera goes down swinging strike three. He clocked at 79 on KCAM and pretty decent movement on that breaking ball. Two outs and in the box, Maglio Ordonez. He watches the outside pitch from Bedard for a ball. A 1 0 pitch. Catcher can't control it. They just have to eat this one. The run's going to score in the air. Well, they pick up a run uh, with a little bit of help from the defense as they kick that one around, not able to make the play. Run scores. That's it, foul by Ordonez. He's ready. Bedard with the 2 1 pitch. That's called for a strike. It'll even the count at 2 and 2. He looked like he was looking for a pitch out over the plate. That fastball down and in locked him up a little bit. And this is inside, and that hit him hard. Well, he didn't throw this one where he wanted to, as the ball just kind of moves in on the plate and gets a piece of the hitter. It's Rayburn at the plate. Oh, Gary, we see that guy get hit with a pitch. I mean, sometimes, listen, as a pitcher, you just lose a grip on the ball. It doesn't come out of your hand the right way. You end up hitting somebody. Bedard gets set and delivers. That's swung on and a liner here. Well, some early production here. One run across in the first. The Tigers on top, one to nothing. Big Bats ready to make an appearance. We're at Comerica Park and enjoying this great evening along with you with Major League Baseball. Carlos Quinton. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now, leading the MLB in batting average. Verlander with a delivery. Santiago. So Quinton is retired. These are the hot bats right now, the highest batting average over the last 10 days, courtesy of State Farm. All these guys have a similar trait, that ability to put the good part of the bat on the ball and make solid contact on a consistent basis. And they're willing to hit from line to line. Here's one, hit very well deep. And Rayburn's able to get to that one. Out number two. And be sure to tune in next Sunday. It'll be Derek Lee and the Chicago Cubs. They find themselves at the Rangers ballpark in Arlington to take on Texas. Start time, 3 Eastern. Really looking forward to calling that game. It's got a chance to be a very interesting matchup between those two teams. And Alex Rios up. And it's hit well off the bat of Rios. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. And it's up against the wall. So there are two men down here, but they do get a man in scoring position. You'll take it on base any time, any inning. It just doesn't matter. And here with this double, maybe it's a chance to get a two-out rally started. It's going to be Przinski, one of the best batting averages in the league. The 1-0 now. Swing and a miss by A.J. Przinski, and the count is knotted up. Always good coming off a three-hit game the night before. And 
Gives you some confidence coming into today's game. The one-two on its way. And A.J. Przinski strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. You see a good inning there from Justin Verlander. He's off to a... And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Clark. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. In time for the up. Here's a look at teams getting it done on our league leaderboard. The staffs that have the lowest ERA. The White Sox number one. The Mariners in second. The Twins third. The Yankees fourth. And it's the Red Sox number five. Well, this whole staff seems to be in shutdown mode. And it doesn't matter if it's the starter, the reliever, or the... Hit sharply down the line. And the Tigers get their first hit of the game. That'll bring up Gerald Laird. Well, he did his job right there, Number getting eight. on base. Now with Gary. one out, let's Gary. see if they can move him around and get him in scoring position. Bedard gets set and delivers. On the ground to second. Retiring Laird. Almost fell over when he got to that one. Boy, there's some upper body strength on that throw. Well, you have to have great body control to play this game. He certainly sewed it there. And he got him. And it's Everett batting. That one's too low, Bedard missing. Towards the middle. Oh, that'll move you on the mound. He just barely got out of the way. A run scores. And the Detroit Tigers, wow, what a momentum swing for them. Number 15. Well, the hitter makes an adjustment going down on the pitch at the bottom of the strike zone and drives it here. And you get a run scored if you're in that at bat. What you want to do is make contact. He did. That pays off. Okay, well, you can look at it a couple ways. You can say, look, we've got the lead. Let's play for another big hit here. Or swung on and ripped towards second. And that's out number three. So they score once on two hits. One man left. Two run ball game. Detroit leads. Jimmy Leland looking on. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand that lead. And here's Martin. And one of the top ten averages right now. Justin Verlanda gets the head on the count. Tough to hit against him now. 0-2. Line to left, but that's going to go foul. Swing and a liner to left. And Guillen takes care of that one. And coming up for the Tigers, the Chicago series ends tonight. They can look forward to a competitive series. The Athletics, Northern California in Oakland. That's Wednesday and Thursday. Following that, a road series to play the Dodgers and their star Manny Ramirez. That series is bound to be tough. That's quite a few road games coming up, and that's always challenging. Over to Cabrera. That's two gone. And it's Johnny Damon now. Last year, three for 13 off the Tigers in Detroit. First pitch on the way to Damon. That's it. Pretty well down the line in left. Guillen will field. And he's there to retire the song. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here in this half inning. Detroit still ahead. So Carlos Guillen leads it off. He's got to have some confidence in this one. Three hits in the game last night. Must be seeing the ball well. Bedard gets set and delivers. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And it's going to be Quentin. As he gets a little exercise that time. And here's Miguel Cabrera. He gets a walk a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Now Brzezinski positions himself. Fastball just misses. 
Now it's all about patience and discipline, the name of the game. He's not afraid to wait it out. He understands the first strike may not be the best strike he sees. Holds up, but it's a called strike. Evens the count at one. One one pitch. Oh, that man. one's too low, Bedard missing. And if you're the Detroit Tigers and you have guys to build around Miguel Cabrera, the fact is they need to get guys on base in front of him. Oh. Only 103 RBIs. You talk about a guy with 34 home runs. They need to get guys on him base so he can drive in 120, 130 to help the Tigers get over the hump and get in the postseason. Here he comes, 3-1. On the ground to first. Played by Canerco. And he steps on first. That's the second out. Number 30. Two outs and in the box, Maglio Ordonez. Career average 337 off the White Sox. That one's too low, Bedard missing. Flat fastball right there. Just missed. Just below the knees. Tell you what, a borderline pitch. I think they wanted that one bad. Here's the delivery. 1-1 one 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 delivery. A fastball taken for a strike. One and two. You're out. And Maglio Ordonez goes down swinging. Strike three. And a good half inning. They're gone in short order in this one. Detroit two. The White Sox nothing. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. And uh, at the plate, one of the Thompson runs scored, top five. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Hot shot towards the hole. Well, Alexei Ramirez's season so far, let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Fourth in doubles, fourth in batting average, and he has also ranked in the top five in hits in the league. That's a guy that makes a lot of contact and finds holes. So he's making hard contact to get himself on base. Here's the first pitch. Strike one. Strike one. Verlander gets the strike with a swing. Well, they've got a couple of hits here, and we're into the fourth inning. So they maybe they're starting to get something right. going in the second time through the lineup. Maybe they'll try to figure something out, Gary. And a ground ball. Cabrera gets one at second. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay. So they will not get the double play. He makes a nice play to get the lead runner at second base with a strong, accurate throw. Good footwork. They just couldn't get the double play. And a runner on, Carlos Quinton will hit. He's the league leader in hits. First pitch to Quinton. Swing, a ball hit high, deep to left field, way back. And out of here, a home run, two runs, one swing. This two-run homer ties the game up. Clutch piece of hitting. And the Pepsi WPA graph, uh, two RBI home run. Take a look at what it's done for their chances. Well, he looked like he got the pitch in his wheelhouse and he just drove it out of the ballpark. When you get behind in a ball game, you want to get back early, get your get your mental set back, and they've done that. Now, this inning isn't over yet. They have a chance to still tack on some more runs. Now, credit the White Sox offense attacking, trying to do what they can to bring this thing back, evening it up. Tie game now. Let's see if they can add on some more runs, Gary. And Beckham set down. The Central Division race is starting to take shape. Let's take a look. The State Farm standings board. First place, the White Sox. In the second spot, the Twins. Third, the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And Alex Rios up. Here's a look at the matchup numbers. 3-0-1 off Detroit. Throws to first in time. That's three down. They come up with two runs to pull even. We're tied up here in Detroit. There's a familiar face, Ozzie Guillen looking up. 
Number this plan for getting this game back Ryan tied up worked Gamer. now uh, for his pitching staff to hold it that way. The first pitch. Right and Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. When you can spot your four seam fastball to the outside corner, the hitter has to have balance at the plate and not pull off the ball. Swing and a shot to third. Here Over to Canerco. That's one down. Second base. It's going to be Santiago now. He hit 310. Great number last year against the White Sox. And the first pitch. First pitch inside with a fastball, ball one. Here's Bedard with a 1 0 pitch. That swung on and grounded up the middle. In time for the out. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. This Detroit series wraps up tonight. They'll kick off a home series with the Angels. Another team at the top of their respective division. That'll be a two game home series. And then they have to contend with Dan Ugla and the Marlins. Lots of home games, that's always a good thing. Larish at the plate. I had the hat trick last night, striking out three times in that ball game, and see if he can't make some adjustments today. First pitch on the way. The 0 0 delivery, a fastball taken for a strike. Now that he's established the bottom of the strike zone, it gives him so many options. He can go to the breaking ball or climb the ladder with another fastball. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this A.B. And it holds at 0 and 2. Bedard gets set and delivers. You're out. Fastball swung out and missed, and the side's retired. No runs, no hits, no one left on. Four complete at Comerica Park. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Leading it off, A.J. Pruszynski. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. Here's the first pitch. Well hit towards the middle. It is through, and the go-ahead runs on board. Now State Farm brings you the leaderboard for the highest on base percentage in the league. Getting on base is a philosophy. It's a mental state. It's a really an approach. And these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major leagues. That brings up Mark Tian. He flew out his last time up. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Didn't get around in time. 0-1. Hitless. Seven at bats last year off Verlander. The pitch swings, lines this one back up the middle, and Everett brings that one in. And that will hold him at first. And a chance now to see where the Tigers sit in the American League rankings. First in walks, fourth in strikeouts, and they're in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position. That's a real asset for any team. When you get runners in scoring position, hit in the clutch and drive them in. Hit in the air to center field. This one's going to be fielded by Ordonez. That's two gone. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. It's Left Damon at the plate. Number 18. He clearly had Johnny a shot at hitting for the cycle last time out. Got the triple, which is the toughest. Hit the ball out of the ballpark for a home run. Got a single, but just lacked the double. Couldn't get it done. Swings on that first pitch. Misses the fastball. 0 and 1. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Verlander with a delivery. Now swing and a shot toward second. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. Justin Verlander coming off the mound. And tied up as he becomes the pitcher of. Looking on, Jim Leland. 
And he knows it starts with great pitching. Happy with the last inning on the mound, now looking for the offense. Liner towards the hole, and Conerco makes the catch. Number four. And it's Everett batting. Single home run in his last at bat. Bedard gets set and delivers. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. And that is in there, the go-ahead run on board. That'll bring Brandon Inge up. Well, he waited for that one to get deep in the zone, and he put a good swing on it. Now, with one out, let's see if they try to move him along. Well, in 2009, Brandon Inge played in 161 games. He had some good power numbers, though, with those 27 home runs, but he only hit 230. That one swung on, hit in the air, deep to left field. He has to back up for it, comes away with the out. Now the State Farm leaderboard staff's responsible for the fewest free passes in the league. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Blue Jays. The Twins third. Fourth, the Mariners. Number five, the Royals rounded out. Will you ask any manager and any pitching coach in baseball the one thing they really hate to see, and that's putting guys on base without having to swing the bat? Well, this team does it better than anyone. Headed for the middle. Oh, my. How did he get out of the way of that? Those are scary. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Uh, oh, one Number mistake four. right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate, and he pays for it. Two outs and in the box, Miguel Cabrera. And frequently walked. He's the most walked hitter in this division. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws to first side is retired. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. And still we've got this tie game in Detroit. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. Shortstop number 10. Alexei Ramirez. Here's the first pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. Gets through. The go-ahead run is on. Now batting. Well, that's the start this team needed. Get that first guy in the inning up. Get him on base. And let's see if they can bring him around to score. Now Paul Conerco batting with a runner on first. He's the league leader in ribbies. And he starts Conerco out. Strike one. Verlander gets the strike with a swing. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. Passes up a ball this time and swings for a strike that's in the dirt. There's a swing and a drive. Deep right field. Off the wall and a hop. The throw. Ramirez around third, headed for the plate. And he's in there. He scores from first. Now batting. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Let's see what the RBI means for their win chances. Our Pepsi WPA graph. 0-2 count, so you protect a pitch that's up, so a little easier to do that with. Absolutely. You can fight it off, punch it over the infielder's head. That time, solid piece of hitting. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Boy, we have seen this offense building momentum, Steve, and what a time of the ball game to do it. You know, Gary, that at bat we just saw could prove to be the most critical at bat in this ball game as they've now taken the lead. Could be one of those situations that uh, decides the ball game. Right now, it looks like their offense is ready to start clicking. Now, Gary, as you were saying, that was one of those situations where they had the opportunity and they capitalized. This offense does look like it's heating up. Let's see if they keep going here. Able to set him down there. Chuck that one up as a strikeout for him. And Beckham's in the box. Uh, he drove in three runs in that ball game last night and got the job done when runners got on base. And the first pitch. A swing and a foul off to the right side. Strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. I pulled the string on that curveball, took a little bit off, and had him way out in front. Down on strikes there. Nice piece of pitching. Well, a great job getting an 0-2. That third pitch, unhittable. Guess he figured why waste the pitch, save the arm. He did. Nice job. And Alex Rios up in the top 10 in hits. And this at bat already 0-1. First pitch was a strike. Verlander with a delivery. 
That's hit foul by Rios. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throws on to first side is retired. So they score once on two hits, one man left. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Taking account of the ball game, there's Isaac Ian. Got what he needed out of his lineup that last time through. This lead now something he can try to protect if he can get some solid pitching. Ball! That misses inside, 1-0. Now one ball, one strike. He watched that fastball that was in there. The one-one pitch. Watches that fastball go by, and now he's at one and two. That's a great pitch right here, pounding the strike zone, going up and away. A pitch he could catch up with. That one gets past, but no damage done. Here's the two-two pitch. Big swing, misses on the changeup, struck him out, went away. He pulled the string right there, must have been looking for the fastball, swings right through the changeup to strike three. It's Rayburn at the plate. And Ryan Rayburn was a part of that revolving outfield that Jim Leland had in Detroit in 2009, but a guy who had some big hits for this Tiger team, and if he continues to have big hits, he'll find more playing time. And Bernard has him 0-1, that one a called strike. Rayburn earned uh, the extra look in the outfield because of that 291 batting average. We'll see if swings and hits this one deep down the line and left. Damon, as he drops back and puts it away. It's going to be Santiago now. Two outs, space is empty. First pitch, here it comes. And Bernard has him 0 1. That one a called strike. Now that he's gotten the four-seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. Oh, and he lays off the fastball. Good pitch, one and one. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. Damon. And there's the third out. And they're unable to make any noise here in this half inning. The White Sox still on top. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. Base hit his last time. A.J. Krasinski. Verlander with a delivery. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0-1. Oh pitch on the way. And that's a strike. A.J. Krasinski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Oh, what a great... Hit hard on the ground towards third. And so Pierzynski retired. Well, he made that throw a split second before he lost control of the body. Now, the key was he kept his eye on the target the entire time. Big smile. He got that one done. And here's Martin. Lined out last time up. One out, nobody on. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Hit hard on the ground to short. Everett picks it up. And that'll set down Tian. A moment here. Let's take a look at our State Farm League leaders in slugging. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. Blue Jays third. The Orioles fourth. And number five, the Indians rounded out. But one through nine, this team can absolutely pound the baseball. Number one in baseball in slugging percentage. And it goes one through nine. They don't care who it is. They're up the middle. And it's through. That's a base hit. Well, sometimes you don't think much of a two-out hit, but if they can continue to capitalize and push another run across, they can extend their slim lead. Here is Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Ah, and he can't catch up with that one, 0-1. Uh, it's important to get that first strike. Now the pitcher in the catbird seat. Everett picks it up. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. Save your arm. Do it by pitching only eight times in one inning, three out. Larish at the plate. He'll start the home half of the seventh. Number 19, Jeff Larish. And the first pitch. First pitch, a slider outside, 1-0. Oh. I think right now when you're up by a run in the seventh inning, 
You've shortened the game. You've got the lead. You hit in the air to left center. And it's in there, the tying run on board. Now up to the plate. Well, a good piece of hitting right there. And anytime you get your first Number hitter eight. of the inning on base, Darryl it could set Laird. up the potential for a big inning. It's layered at the plate. 0 for 2 thus far. No one out and a runner on first. Here's the first pitch. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. Well, that's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. Got one. And two. They got both of them that time. And it's Everett batting. Two for two in the game. Bases empty with two outs. And the first pitch. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. A shot up the middle, and that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. The White Sox maintaining their lead. And in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Two for three thus far. Alexi Ramirez. First pitch. Strike one. Verlander gets the strike with a swing. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez is going to have to protect now. Well, you talk about a guy who just corkscrewed himself into the ground. Bad timing. The 1-2 pitch. Ramirez will foul that one away. He swings now and really hit that. And Rayburn, and he grabs it in his tracks. We're breaking the action here. Let's look at the hit leaders on our State Farm leaderboard. And it's Paul Canerco now. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that deep. Hut shot towards the hole. Canerco is certainly one of those valuable players, especially in the American League as a bench player, because he does give pitchers concern. You know if you make a mistake, he can drive one. Well, he really can, and that's the thing with him. And, you know, you remember back to... Swing and a drive, deep left center. Guillen will field. And he meanders over to put it away. They followed the advanced scouting reports to a T. They played the outfielders back that time, and he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. Verlander with a delivery. Hit hard to second. Throws to first side is retired. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. And now, here come the Tigers. This is going to be the last... And Brandon Inge at the plate. 0 for 2 thus far. Number 15. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point, but it is getting late. Do you want to take any chances? The manager decides to go to the pen. Fastball misses away. 1-0. Well, you go to the eighth inning right here, and obviously the game's getting much shorter here. Two innings left in this one, and you've got the one-run lead. But you Swung on, hit in the air to right center, and it's going to be Quentin. He's now taking charge, puts it away. Left fielder, number nine. And it's Carlos Guillen on the box now. We'll try it again here, just one for three thus far. First pitch, A.B. begins to Guillen. First pitch, and he misses the fastball, strike one. One out right here in the eighth inning. Obviously a critical time of the game right now as we're getting short. Offensively, they need extra bases. They need a double. Get in scoring position. Get a triple here. Get yourself in a position where maybe a productive out scores a run. Here it comes. 
And Carlos Guillen goes down swinging out of there, three strikes. Well, you can hang laundry on that one, 94 miles per hour, pretty good velocity, but that's pretty straight. I think the pitcher had him fooled on this one all the way through, John. He wasn't expecting that outside corner delivery. Well, he just pulled the string on that pitch, and that's good, good stuff right there. Lays off that one, outside edge, and it's a strike. Look here, one out here remaining in the eighth inning. You've got to try to do something offensively, and I think that with two outs, even if you hit a single, you've got to think double out of the batter's box. Force them to make a play. Get yourself in scoring position. A smash between short and third. And there's Tian for the third out. And so out of the inning, only eight pitches thrown. That's pretty efficient. White Sox three, Tigers two. And Alex Surrios to lead off. Center fielder, number 51, Alex Rios. And he starts Rios out. Strike one. Verlander gets the strike with a swing. That's just a great pitch right there. I mean, that's the hardest pitch for a hitter to try to stay back on. That's why he was out in front of that one. Swing and a miss on the breaker, one down. Well, it made that one look easy, huh? I mean, look at three pitches and a strikeout. Verlander with a delivery. And that'll put Pruszynski on first. Look at the lineups who have been pounding the ball over the last 10 games, courtesy of State Farm. The Orioles, number one. Second, the Indians. The Red Sox third, fourth the Mariners, and that number five on the list, the White Sox. Well, some tough lineups right here to pitch against because a lot of power threats throughout the course of these lineups, and they look for a pitch they can drive, and when they get it, they can take you deep. Line drive left of the bag and foul. Oh one, Verlander kicks and deals, and that's a strike. Martinez going to have to take. Very close approach on the next one. Watch it. Swing and a shot to third. That's one out. Over to first. He is safe. Almost a double play. Not quite enough time. Well, quick release by the third baseman. They get the lead runner at second. Just not able to turn the double play. It's going to be Nicks now. He singled his last trip. Well, they're not going to disregard him at first base, but he's not much of a threat to go. I think they've got to focus on the hitter right now. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0-1. As a hitter, you don't want to fall too far behind in the count. Right now, you want to be able to know what pitch he's going to throw. Can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0-2. That one's fouled back out of play behind home. Swung on line to right center field. In there, and this is going to be trouble. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. Tian's on his way home. And he's in there to score all the way from first base. Coming to back for the Chicago. You always want a cushion as you send your pitcher out to try to shut down the game. That hit delivers a run, and now it's a two run game. I think they have the margin they need to hold on to victory. Johnny Damon looking to light things up here right now, Gary. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. Well, my friend Gary. Hard ground at a short. Throws to first in time. That's three down. So they score once on two hits, one man left. White Sox by two. Clean up batter. Do up next. There's a familiar face, Jim Leland. Still a chance here for his ball club with a two-run deficit looming large, but it is not insurmountable. And Ordonia settles in. First pitch. First pitch of fastball. That's in there for a strike. Well, nobody out here in the ninth. You know what they're trying to do. They need to get somebody on and bring the tying run to the plate. And that's swung on and hit. Rios 
that gets down. The tying run coming up. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. First pitch on the way. Fastball in there for a called strike. Velocity and location are absolutely critical. That pitch was exactly where he wanted to throw it. He deals. Pena with a strike two. Good pitch. Good splitter that time, but it's called a ball one and two. Lined up the middle, and that gets the tying run on board. I mean the back. And maybe he wanted to waste that pitch and just didn't get far enough away or up high. No, it just it was still caught a little too much of the plate. The batter took advantage of it. Good focus at the plate. It's going to be Santiago now. Career, he's 0 for 1 off Pena. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. Chicago is ready to try and close this one out. Johnny faces these Detroit hitters. Main objective? Well, Bobby Jenks is one of these. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And there we go, the winning run on base. In the back. A real pressure mounting right now. That base hit loads up the bases. He's going to have to make a pitch to try to get out of this mess. Big Bobby Jenks out on the mound in a tough situation, Gary. Going to be a real test here. This is some kind of a late inning jam right here, even though they've got the lead. Bases loaded, nobody out. I think this guy has the stuff and the heart to do it. He's up a couple runs, go right at him, change speeds, and keep the hitters off balance. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Over to Canerco. One away. And they bring him home. Number Good team eight. offense right there. Get him on, get him over, get him in. Doesn't have to be the long ball. Out can score runs. It's layered at the plate. You gotta call this promising if you're on the offensive side of it. It's an important part of the ball game. Get that ball game tied up and then move on. And I trail by just one run now after that hit. Let's see if they can keep the pressure on and make this pitcher work. Boy, this is what you come to the ballpark for. This hometown crowd sensing that maybe they're gonna get a W here. Oh, you can sense it. They feel now they can all run. And Rayburn scores. Can't get him. The run scores on the error. Well, he boot that one, and obviously leading to a run scored right there. So you can't make those kind of mistakes and still win ball games. And Gerald Laird looks at that one for a ball. That'll even up the count. Now the 2-2. Hit on the ground, up the middle. Retiring Laird. And they win it. Game-winning run is across. Walk-off win for the home team, getting it done in uh, extraordinary fashion. Everybody celebrating. Well, it's time here for the Pepsi Clutch Performer. Well, anytime you get a two-hit game, you have to be very happy, especially the way it's going to boost your batting average. But the bottom line is those two hits were the reason why this team won the game, and it shows. And, Steve, that ought to send these folks home happy. Well, no question about it. They get the win in a close game, a lot of excitement. An enthusiasm and ready for the next one. And that's going to do it for us here. For Steve Phillips, John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. Take care.